Hey, what's going on, champs? I'm Erin Deliosa. Welcome to an Immigrant's Life podcast. My podcast about immigrants and immigration and everything in between. Thank you for listening and downloading the show. And thank you for supporting my dad. Welcome back, Immigrant Nation. Another week, another new episode. As always, I appreciate you for listening to our podcast whenever or wherever you are listening to it. Thank you for being here and please continue to support. If you want to join our community, please go ahead and subscribe now so you won't miss an episode. And another way to be part of the Immigrant Nation is to follow our social media accounts. Our handle is at an immigrant's life. There you can see all extra content about the podcast and the episodes, current and the former ones. It is also there where you can contact me if you or someone you know wants to come on the podcast as a guest. Or you can also send an email to animmigrantslife at yahoo.com. Let's connect and let's tell your beautiful story. All the reminders are done. Now, let's talk about this week's episode. In today's episode, we'll delve into our guest's incredible journey from a fierce competitor on the volleyball court to a passionate advocate for mental well-being. It's a story of triumph, resilience, and the power of adaptability. Her journey is a testament to the importance of adaptability in navigating the highs and the lows of life. Be it on the court or in the realm of personal growth, so Whether you're an athlete striving for greatness, a parent juggling multiple responsibilities, or simply someone looking to embrace change and growth, this episode is for you. And let me not waste more time and get to the point. Without further ado, let's get into the show. Isa dalawa tatlo. Today's guest is a former pro volleyball player that belongs to the 1% of the 1% for her looks and athleticism. Everyone, please welcome Senya Bosniak. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, Senya, how are you doing? I'm doing great now that I see in your face, smiley, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course. By the way, I know we talk about offline and I really do appreciate that you made a time for the podcast. Yeah, it took me a long time, but we are here finally, so it's all good. Yeah, that's what matters, right? By the way, before we get into the nitty-gritty, if you want to tell the Immigrant Nation where they can reach you, or if you want to promote anything, go ahead. Yeah, they can reach out uh, through my Instagram, which is uh, K-S-E, I-S-K-S-E. Mm-hmm. It's K-S-E, so that's the easiest way. I always check my DMs and... If there's any questions or about anything, I'm always happy to answer. Amazing. Do you know what your name means? Yeah, I actually had people asking me that a few days ago. I say, so that's a person who usually travels a lot. Well, they call it stranger, but it's not really. So, yeah, I guess that really relates to me a oh, lot. Okay, so it's a person that travels. So it's a traveler. Yes, yes. I think in Italian, they say... What did they say? Strangheri? Strangero? Something yes. like that? Yes. Str- I don't know. A friend of mine taught me that. Uh, you you met a lot of people, so you must know. Yeah. I have actually family in Italy. Oh, really? Which yeah. part? Uh, it's in Milan. Oh, you know, I played in Italy for a year. Yeah, I, I saw that. played in Parma, and it was like an hour maybe from Milan. So mm. I used to go there a lot for... Uh, my days off and you know just to <laughs> have some party, fun party. <laughs> yeah do you speak italian um i don't really speak i i do understand i actually had like a few classes that when i was there hmm. uh, but because i don't really practice with anybody i don't speak anymore hmm. does the team cover that by the way yeah okay yeah and did you have other players that are not from italy when you were playing there uh, yes, I had a girl. She was from Holland. Uh, so yeah, we both of us we actually attended those Italian language classes. It was cool, was interesting, but uh, because of the lack of free time, um, 
we didn't really do a lot of them, but I still can't understand. And mostly, I mean, when you play on the court, like, you know, all the sport terms, like volleyball, basketball, whatever you play, um, my coach didn't speak it like English whatsoever. But I've learned like all these terms and, uh, you know, we kind of communicated really well. So Yeah. You're like, a- Senya, block every shot. Yes. Yeah, so, and, and, you know, they're very emotional. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I did some digging on you. Apparently you grew up in, I'm going to try to say it, okay. Bia Rosa. Rosa. Belarus. Is it yes. a big town or a small town? It's a very small town. Um, I say 25, 30,000 people. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, by now it's probably bigger. I don't mm. really go, like, I don't really visit a lot. So, but yeah, it's a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Funny enough, I started to play basketball. Mm. And because of it was small town. They didn't really have a good basketball program for uh, women. So I had to practice and play with the guys for some time. Imagine it was very, yeah, I was like 12, 13, 14. And mm. um, was very distracting because. <laughs> 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 well, wait, 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 wait. I think they're more distracted because of you. I think so. I remember <laughs> that when the coach would leave the gym. Mm. Uh, that that was crazy. So yeah, <laughs> so um, I was invited to practice. Like uh, with it was we have so we have like in our capital Minsk we have a base for athletes and who who potentially can be national team or like Olympic team. So I was invited, but because my age would like not be, I was let's say I wasn't good enough for the older group, and I was. Um, like my age was in the middle. So they asked me, can you change the age and date of birth? I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> Watch this. Like, it's okay. <laughs> Just change the passport. So, yeah. So I was like, I, I went back home. And during the summertime, my coach, he said, well, we are going for a summer camp with guys. I don't think you would really want to go with guys and stay, you know, it's not appropriate. So just mm-hmm. stay in practice. And during that time, uh, some volleyball coach approached me and kind of asked, like, hey, do you want to play volleyball? I was like, hell no. I, like, I, re- I really love basketball so much, you know. And um, mm. he's like, just give it a try. And in, um, in um, like an hour and a half away from my city, we had a really new professional volleyball club. Mm. And so he's like, just come for tryouts. And mind you, I never played volleyball in my life before. But they saw me, I was, by that time, I was 14, 15, I think I was like 6'2 already, 6'2 ish. And so, yeah, I was like 14 years old and uh, I came for tryouts, didn't do anything. I could, like, it was so crazy, but they offered me to stay and um, yeah, that's how I started my journey. I mean, obviously you you have athleticism and plus you have the height. Yeah. Were you the tallest girl there? Um, in Belarus, we have a lot tall females, I'll say. Okay. So maybe at that age, because I was training with juniors. So yes, I think I was the tallest. But then, mm. you know, when I was practicing with older girls, there we had enough tall mm. females. Yeah. What made you stay and play volleyball, even though you don't like it? Um, see, I've changed my mind about it, but so... Um, I was one year at that city at the club. I finished grade nine, and during the summertime, we had a like a European Championship qualifications in our city in the gym, because our gym was one of the best in, in the country. So then, Azerbaijan national team, Turkish, Sweden, and Belarus national team, they had the qualifications. So coaches from Azerbaijan national team, they saw me just sitting there, like you know, watching games. They came and they're like, hey, um, so how old, are, how old are you? How long are you playing volleyball? And at that time, they actually, what called now Champions League, they won the Euro Cup or whatever was it. So they won the big like cup. And he said like, so we have a really great team if you want to come to play in Azerbaijan. And I told my mom and, I was, and she's like, are you crazy? It's like all the way in different, you know, sides. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's um, it was. Anna said, "I want to go and try because it's it was really great opportunity. First of all, because 
I know I knew if I stay in my small city, you know, there's not so many chances to be someone. Um, even though if I would play volleyball in Belarus, still there's not so many chances. Um, so I, I convinced my parents and I moved to Azerbaijan when I was 15. I left my family behind and that's how my journey actually started, like professional, professional journey. Okay, of course you left, but was it against their will or you they just like, yeah, just go? Uh, my dad didn't want me to go. Of course, for him, I was like, I'm a younger, I have older brother, so I was a younger kid and plus I'm a girl. So he was like, no, it's a different culture. It's a Muslim country. Like, he's like, no, I don't want you to go. But my mom, she said, maybe, you know, she should try at least. Um, so my mom came with me for, for two weeks. And then when she saw everything is perfect, she left and it was good. Mm. So how was those first years? Uh, it was tough, man. It was tough because I was practicing with um, with junior team. So we would go and play like European championships forever for like, yeah, U16, I say. But then at the same time, coach had a lot of expectations and believes in me. He would bring me to the practice with like main team and girls who play Champions League, who play World Championships, who play like whatever they already played at the time. And I was 15 and they're like 30 something. It wasn't fun. Trust me. I would cry and go to my coach. I said, I don't want to be with the main team. I just let me practice with juniors. Well, it's a lot of pressure too, you know, and it wasn't so fun. But then um, he made actually because we had only one team there, like really good team. So we were a club and a national team at the same time, like same players, same management. So we would travel a lot and, uh, you know, he would kind of, yeah, like, so we wouldn't have a lot of games during the winter and he would book a trip for our team, go to Dubai. So it was my first time in Dubai. I'm 16. I'm like, Woo, what's happening, you know, or go to Italy for a week. And so he would make us travel a lot. And, um, and then the after year and a half, um, one of the players who were middle. So by that time, I was outside hitter. Mm. And then the girl, he just got injured and she had to leave. So here I am, six, 17 years old, almost like 18. And he's like, yeah, you know what? You're going to play in Champions League this year. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, don't worry. Just be on the court. You know, don't just do anything. Be on the court. Literally, like literally. <laughs> And and that year, I think that year I won a like a best blocker in Champions League. Mm, congratulations! I, I just I guess yeah I just yeah he put me in the middle like and it's really hard job because you have to like be blocking and be everywhere at the same time. It's really hard job. So, but yeah, and ever since then I played. Um, I had a break when uh, I had the, my kid, and after then I came back and just kept it. Mm. <laughs> yeah our, our mom and dad they're i'm sure they're tall people uh my mom i think five ten ish Ooh. and my dad was probably six two but my granddad from my mom's side like uh he he was my grandpa was tall as well are people in like in belarus tall people not naturally Quite, tall people? yes more t taller than i guess Average, I don't know. Yeah, we have a lot of tall people, I say. Well, you know, you played in the Philippines. They all we all <laughs> short, you know? Yeah, they're they're not so much. <laughs> like one of the video I saw you you're like in the middle and you're like this giant lady with this midgets, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was quiet and you know when I was uh hugging them after we made a point where we win, it was hmm. but the best time of my life, honestly. Yeah, that's why I love volleyball. Every time you get score, you guys always huddle up. Yes, yes, yes. What, what is that for? Like, what I mean, I I know what it is, but like, how does how did that culture start? Do you know? I'm not sure. I just always knew like volleyball is a very team sport. I mean, all the team sports like basketball, soccer, and football. Um, it just more because we it's not a contact sport, so we kind of stay more inside on our court. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, if you yeah. play basketball, it's there is a contact in it. So um, yeah, volleyball. That's why we kind of stay more on our side, and it's more like I would say energy and just a support. You know, we can just stay for a second, chat about something, and and then it's sometimes there are players who doesn't who don't have like a really good day. 
you know, but we gotta be there for each other. And that's why we kind of let's go that spirit. And I hate volleyball. I... Why is that? Because <laughs> the ball hurts when it's your arm. You know, it's funny. Um, every one who doesn't like to play volleyball because they got kind of scared that the ball gonna hit them mm -hmm. and the ball gonna hit you, you mm -hmm. know? Usually what you're scared from, it's gonna find you and <laughs> happen. I mean, I played, the highest level I played was in college, a small college, intramurals. Like, that's it, right? And I got like, I got an, a medal, like, what do you call like top six or whatever, best top six. Where did um, you go to college? Oh, this is in the Philippines, like a small college. Yeah, in yeah. Oh, it's not in Manila, no? No, no, no. I didn't go in Manila. I hate Manila. Hmm. Because uh, we were practicing at one of the colleges. I don't remember exactly your name, but always before us, after guys would come and play volleyball and, you know, it was fun watching. And we actually played and practiced a lot, a lot of time with guys. Okay. Sparring. Yeah. Yeah, volleyball is big in the Philippines. I remember when it became big. I think it was Sea Games back in probably 94 or something like that. And like the Cubans and the Brazilians came. And oh, yeah. I always remember one of the players. Her name was Yumilka Ruiz. I think she's oh, I from know Cuba. Her. I mean, I remember she was one of the oldest players when I was still younger. Hmm. We played against national team of Cuba then. So, yeah. I mean, there are two sports that I prefer watching over men's games. Volleyball and soccer. Yeah. Of course, volleyball, you know, cuties, beautiful ladies. I don't know. It's like I find it different the way the women play. It's like there's more grace. It is more um, momentum. I think there's more rally, like when you can actually see the game keep going on. When men are playing, they just boom, boom and make a point and that's over, you know. Yeah. Going back so, to you a little bit, because uh, yeah. you were born in Belarus, raised yeah. there, but your nationality is Azerbaijani now? I have to. So okay. like my original, I still I, I still have, I mean, I'm here in Canada with my Belarusian passport, uh, but I still have Azerbaijani. So yeah, I have to. Mm. Um, I mostly use my Azerbaijani uh, citizenship for volleyball, obviously. Okay. Yeah. How did you end up in Canada? Because of volleyball, too. Mm. <laughs> so I, so uh, before I went to play in the Philippines, um, I have a, my best friend who lives here. And so we played together in Azerbaijan. She was a setter. And her parents moved to Canada. She left. And uh, I, I made a joke. It was funny, actually. I made a joke. I, I was like, hey, go to Canada, settle down, and then you will help me to come there. I was joking. Never, ever, I thought I will come here. And so after maybe three, four years, um, I made my announcement that I'm not going to play for national team anymore. Um, I had some conflict with them. Mm. So I took a break for like seven months, I think. And then right before Philippines, she reached out and she's like, hey, so would you ever think about coming to Canada and do anything in school? So apparently, you know, they had a player who got pregnant and so she left the team. So the, the spot was open and they needed someone who has experience. So they offered me a scholarship in Thompson Rivers University here in Kamloops, NBC. So that's how I said, hell yeah. And then for me and my kids, so uh, my my kid was 11 at that time. So I thought like it's a great opportunity for her future. Um, it's a, I know like it's it's a good time for myself as well to develop, you know, when I finished playing sports. Um, yeah, so I came here, I did my masters. I played only one year, then COVID happened and that's that was it. <laughs> and then you graduated. <laughs> Yes, they offered me to stay. And funny enough, like if you know, in Canada, it's not like the States. Like uh, in the States, you can't come and play in a college if you play it pro. You gotta yeah, play I was going to ask. College. In Canada, it's not like that. You can still mm. go and play pro, come back and play. And there's also no age limit. Like no, I mean, they're trying to do that after I started playing there. Yes. Because <laughs> you're too good. <laughs> I, That's was, I was 31. You're too and, good. And there are kids. I was 31, but the kids were like 17, 18, and 19, you know? And the what? coach is like, it's not fair. How are you going to play against kids? You're just going to kill them. What are you doing? <laughs> you know? I said, no rules, no, nothing. I don't I, know. I'm just 
girl needs to get paid, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. So when you open the idea to your daughter that you guys are moving, where are you guys living then back then? Azerbaijan? Uh, no, I was all over the place. I was living, I was living in Turkey for mm. some time. And then um, at that time, I came, we were at Belar- in Belarus. And then you told her like, hey, we're moving. How did she take it? Oh, she was really happy. Yeah? Really happy, yeah. Um, I mean, she stayed with my mom while I was in Philippines. Mm. And then I came back to do all the paperwork and visa and stuff. And then we just packed and let's go. <laughs> well, why do you think she was happy? Because was she doing good socially or she just really want to have a new start? Yeah, I think, well, first of all, she's very used to travel, like, since she was a little baby, like, she was living in Italy with me, like, you know, in Russia, when I played in St. Petersburg, so she used to go different places and stay there, so I don't think it was really big of transition for her, like, we used to do that, Uh, but just, I guess, yeah, like, everybody says Canada is a great country, even, like, for her education after, like, postgraduate, you know, like, after post-secondary, sorry, so... Yeah, and plus she's a LGBTQ community member, so mm. it's more welcoming here. Apart, uh, unlike in Belarus and post-Soviet countries, is <laughs> very strict and very not supportive. You know, so. Oh yeah, definitely. Does she play volleyball too? Uh, let's not get there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little. Uh, I'm I'm not feeling upset, but she yes, she played. She will be 16 by and. At the end of this month, hmm. she's the same height as me, maybe slightly taller, maybe. Uh, and then she played in school. She even played this season in school and in a club. But then she said, no, I don't want to play professionally. I don't want to play anyhow, even though I tried to explain that you might get any scholarship you want in U.S. or even here. Mm-hmm. Nope. And um, very much into arts and drama and film industry. So... I'll just support with what she likes, honestly. But yeah, can you imagine those? <laughs> like there are people who doesn't have that height or and she's very like freaking talented, you know? Mm. Just got this like in volleyball, just so good, but no. Nope. Yeah. How do you make a piece with that? Uh, it took me some time. It was coming though. Like it's not like one day out of nowhere. So mm. I said... Well, but the, then I said, um, you choose to go a different path. You don't want any scholarships. I'm not paying for your school. So do whatever you want to do. Right? Yeah, of course, man. Yeah. Like you have this opportunity. God gave you this gift. And all you yeah. have to do is do minimum. Yeah. Just go for college for do and still can do what you like to do. Right. The degree you want. Yeah, exactly. Kids these days. You mentioned U.S., Mm-hmm. When you were, you know, going through the European League and all that stuff, was there any college back in the NCAA Division One that tried to recruit you? Yes, when I was in Azerbaijan, actually, uh, I had agents who reached out, but then um, my coach and he was also president of federation at the same time. Mm. They wouldn't let me go. He Ooh. said, "Like you gotta stay because you we invested in you so much time and money, la la la." So I, I actually got the green card as well that time. Uh, I had to just go there and like, you know, do, do all the paperwork and mm-hmm. they wouldn't let me go. So did you have a contract? It kind of, yes. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Do you regret that? Now that I've worked in athletics here in Canada and I have a lot of friends who play in the U in the US, you know, NCA and uh, division one and two. I think I would love to experience that for sure. Because mm. even ca- Canadian universities and like, you know, how they roll in here, they say a scholarship, but they only maybe pay part of your tuition or only tuition when, you know, you can, it's so different in the States. So. Oh, isn't that a full ride? It was, mine here wasn't full ride. They only paid for tuition, oh. which is great, you know, but they had to take care of everything else still. So. You have to work. Uh, my first year I didn't work, okay, but then how long you can stay without working in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> Probably a few months. That's it. 
Yeah, so my first year I didn't work because um, we had to travel every second weekend, you know, Thursday to Sunday. I had I did my master's, obviously, a lot of, like, homework, mm-hmm. had my kid at home. So there was no way I could work, but then COVID happened. My coach allowed me to practice, like, three times a week instead five and you know so I was working 7 a.m till 12 and then I would go to practice and then I had my classes and like it was a lot like my second year was a lot but it was part of my journey If it's clubs, you mean? I think Champions League. I don't know if they play it now. I know Ceph, like the Gamer Cups. Yeah, but in in uh, national level, of course, Olympics, World Championship. I know they have different like VNL and the Grand Prix that they play. So I played almost. I mean, I played all the championships except Olympics. Uh, because they only, I think at that time, they only had like two teams maybe or one team coming of Europe. And I mean, the, the European teams are the best in volleyball, most of them. So it was quite hard to qualify, but I was the world championship twice and European championships because they go every two years. I can't remember, but all the time. <laughs> Yeah, had my good time back then. <laughs> Was that a natural thing with you or somebody taught you how to be a good blocker? I think it was naturally at the beginning. Then, you know, I had to work a lot on myself. Um, and honestly, being a good middle blocker, it's also who you're playing with, who is on the corner, like outside hitters. Because some outside hitters, they'll be just there in the air, just like, and you trying to cover, it's hard to block somebody. But there's some be some solid, solid, you know, like really good people who can know how to choose the right place. And so I'll just come and... So it's really it's like, yeah, it's a individual awards, but depends on who you're playing with around you, so... I am. I actually had the interview for my other job a couple days ago and they're like so how do you work in a team i'm like freaking what kind of question is that <laughs> <laughs> have you seen these awards yeah like what do you mean team player i'm the freaking the best team player <laughs> i usually mention that yeah i i mentioned that when they ask question about myself i usually say that i was professional volleyball player for that such years and then are you retired now yeah Funny, I didn't have my even my I didn't even have my retirement kind of thing. It just COVID happened, and then they offered me to play. I actually actually have four more years eligibility if I wanted to go to university. But I mean, I'm I'm 36, so I don't think so. <laughs> Do you have injuries that that lingers, or you're you're good? No, I just. Prefer to work on my career, and right now I have goals and dreams, and you know, just I don't want to waste. I mean, yeah, I would probably I, I miss playing, I miss that lifestyle, but it is what it is. That's one thing I'm like I always think about, like professional players. For your entire whole life, you dedicate your life to this one thing. Yeah. Um, I think my mental, mostly mental struggle is what, how I I saw my body changing, you know, like physically. What do you mean? Uh, uh, like, well, because like even after COVID and everything, I gained weight and then, Mm. um, seeing yourself as a female, especially and having that mentality back, like in my country, everyone is very judgmental about the weight and stuff, you know, so, um, but I wasn't that happy because I had to be in that regime all the time. I couldn't eat, you know, whatever I wanted. So, but like now when I see those changes, it's mentally not easy because you, I used to see myself very fit, you know, very like muscular and in a great shape. And now because I have to work a lot, I mean, it's excuse, but still, <laughs> 
it's different. I don't practice twice a day anymore. I don't work and live that much anymore. I like obviously, right? And um, so mentally, that was the hardest part for me. Um, but about work, I was always um, goal driven and motivated. So I knew like whatever happens in my life, I'm going to be in a great place and which is happening. I graduated. I was lucky. I was working. Um, <clears throat> I got like a contract for seven months to work with my athletics department as a sports and events coordinator, you know, so I had the chance to work with the coaches, the teams, and we have really great program. It was in Kamloops. And then I, I moved here. I was working here at the college also with athletics. And I love so much mental health. So I knew it's going to be interconnected somehow, but I didn't know how yet because it takes time you know to figure out but yeah i'm working now in the mental health field um planning to go to back school and do my master's in psychology and so hopefully with that time um i have a lot of people that like i know people that they used to play together and they are coaching now in the bigger universities in the states so hoping to make that link or connection because i want to work with the high level athletes as a sports psychologist in the future. Yeah, definitely. When you were in Belarus, zero, zero <laughs> understanding, not even 0.1%, whatever it is, like zero. <laughs> no, it's, it's that's why, that's the reason why too I want to be in that field because I've been through a lot myself. I didn't have any help, any understanding. I know mental is the most important part in athletes, you know, performance. You can be physically strong as much, you know, and work out as much, but if your mental is not okay, you're not gonna succeed. Yeah, it's such a big deal, you know? It is a big deal. Like when I coach for like house league for kids, and that's one thing I... Yeah. How would you have a conversation with your, with your son or your daughters? after a game that is tough or a great game yeah it's a it's a big game changer you know yeah like years ago i think 10 15 years ago when i just started we had we competed and then so we played against let's say german national team or holland or whatever and they had because they are coaches now i think even italy i think it was italy because Italian coaches, they are head coaches in Turkish clubs like Fenerbahce or Exegibashi, Vakif Bank, and they're winning all the possible like games and cups and everything. So they had, a, they started to have someone like sports psychologists working with players. And my, my last year in national team, I say 2017, we had one coach from Croatia. He was a conditioning coach, but also worked on mental and um, visualizing meditating, a lot of stuff. And I was, I think, at the bestest, like, form that I could be, you know, for the whole time. So it's important because uh, it's not just mental when you go playing. It's also if the player get injured, right, how he will come back or she will come back. Yeah. It's a lot of different, like, chunks, but, yeah. This day, yeah, you know, like the way I moved, the, even the way I played, because you can get the fear, you know, what if anything can happen again, especially coming from big injuries like a knee surgery, any kind of surgery. So there's a lot of factors. Also, how you go to go and and just be like confident, you know, and um, or for example, the hardest for me was when we played those championships, like. You know, it's uh, usually three games because it's a pool, like a group. So we have three games in a row, and then we have one day off. And then we have three games in a row, and, and so like semifinal, final, world championship, whatever championship. Um, so when you go and you have really hard group, and you win in one game, and then you lose the game. That, and so how do you get ready in one night and go back to the court to make sure that you're going to go and kill it? You know, so it's it's a lot of things that I know from my experience and I think I can help other people. 
just waiting for that part to get my education back. Um, I'm not able to study right now because I'm still in work permit. And yeah, uh, it's it's stupid rules in Canada. I'm sorry, but it doesn't make sense to me. Oh, you're telling me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I know a lot of people coming from Philippines in the um, pharma, pharmacological, I don't know if I pronounce it right, whatever, yeah. or nurses or like any different professions, they have to restudy again. So it happened to me. I have bachelor's in physical education and health. Um, I, ha I was able to do my master's in education, but I'm not able to teach in secondary because I have to do my license for two years. Teaching license. <laughs> make it make sense, right? <laughs> How did you end up in the Philippines? Yeah, I was taking a break from volleyball. And then my agent, uh, she is my... She was my great friend at the same time. She's like, hey, would you want to go? There is maybe an opportunity. And I said, um, I haven't been practicing for six months. Haven't touched a second. Like, I didn't play volleyball or anything. She's like, don't <laughs> worry about it. You're like, you you got it. You know, if you played for years, you'll be, you will be great. So, yeah, they find the team. She found the team. And um, I said, yes. And mm. and. I'm so happy I said yes, because I think God knew that I will come to Canada and I will be having those four, three, four really tough years, you know. <laughs> so he was like, just go to Philippines, enjoy it. Um, and then I came, they usually, usually they have like two to three weeks. Try. It's not tryouts, but because I think a lot of players, they said they were in a great shape, but they came and they were not. <laughs> Which I get it. It's in the middle of season, right? Because it was mm. January, February. Um, no, I was lucky. My team was the best of the best. The management, coaches, uh, anybody. Like everybody. Oh, I miss it so much. <laughs> it is so much. In Azerbaijan, do you get recognized in the streets? Yeah. Yeah, I wear. Yep, I was every time I go downtown. Um Anywhere people knew me there, that's why, you know, like usually had to be very mindful of what I'm doing outside. Because even if I wanted to go, let's say, to the club or like, do, 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 I had to make sure that I'm not doing anything crazy because I'm representing national team and national team is a, is a big deal there. Like still today is huge. Everybody knows you. Uh, we, we went to meet with the president of the country a few times. It's like, it's a really huge deal. So. Oh, wow. So being a star, if you allow me. Yeah. I was always humble person. So no, I didn't really like to talk much about myself, even though I knew like I, I was really good at what I was doing until today. I have a friend, my coworker, she's like, oh my God, she's a celebrity. She has her own Wikipedia page. I'm like, Shh, I don't like to talk about myself. And I say, well, it's in the past. So no, uh, you know what affected me though? The lifestyle. Yes. Because when I was playing, you know, as the athletes who live good life and travels and go for vacations three times a year, it's all changed. And I literally <laughs> <laughs> have to start everything from nothing. So Oh, man. Well, will you believe I will go for my first vacation since I moved here? So my first vacation in four years, I will go to Mexico in November. Hmm. So I just kind of find things that I'm looking for. Um, I still try to treat myself nice when I can. And it doesn't mean that I have a bad life in here, you know. I have a good life. I work and I have everything I need, I guess. Like, uh, But... Um, it's not the same that life I was living before still. So, but I'm getting there. I'm working on it. And I'm sure in a couple of years, I'll be just right there. <laughs> yeah.
for like a week, everything's yeah, yeah, covered, yeah. and then suddenly you're just you. Yeah, just normal, random, regular person. Yeah. Enjoy the transition of from being a pro valuable player to working a nine to five job. Um, I work in a field that I really love. So, you know, um, I don't even feel like I'm working, honestly. I, I, it comes naturally to, for me. Like uh, whenever I go to work, I have a great atmosphere. I have a great team. Um, so it's rewarding, I think. Um, so I'm happy with what I'm doing now. So, yeah, I guess. I don't know. There is nothing to deal with, really. I'm, I'm happy with where I am right now. Hmm. I don't know if you want to talk about, but you said that you work with teens. Oh, yes. Uh, my age is 12 to 24. So hmm. I have a few kids. I work that are 14 years old. I have kids. I mean, I can't call them kids, but youth uh, that are 18, 19, 20, 23. So depends. I mean, I do work with their families as well. Okay. Do you coach them or how do you, how does it work? So uh, the program that I'm coordinating, it calls Family Natural Supports. Uh, so I'll say I do a lot of family work in conference and uh, navigation. So a lot of kids, especially here in Canada, um, you know, homelessness is very big here. And so I basically work with families and kids uh, to prevent the homelessness or kind of if there's any issues inside, I'm just working with them and helping them navigate that, um, referring them to different services and uh, resources that I know on in behalf. So it's pretty cool job. I love it. You know, and um, a lot of um, addictions and substance use involved. I mean, in Canada, it's, it's huge too. Yeah, but then you can see uh, the trauma and like why people living the way they're living. Um, very, I'm very compassionate, very empath person, and uh, I don't know. I just, I guess, I have that. I like, you know, it's funny. My mom always called me ma ma Mother Teresa because I always like to help people. So it does affect me sometimes, but I've learned how to not bring work to home, even though sometimes there are situations when um, kids are struggling a lot and like they need support, but I cannot have my work phone with me. So like I will kind of think in my head, I hope they're fine, you know, but I have my own at home. So I have a lot of problems home too <laughs> <laughs> to deal with. Yeah. Was there? A lot of things. I think that's what helped me to deal when I was myself a teenager, you know, going through a lot of stuff. Um, definitely never experienced substance use or like all this homelessness back home because I it's it's you know, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of experience that um, I lived in different countries, different cultures, how people mindset, you know, how they think um, their mindset, how they see things, because, you know, Canada is um, a lot of people, even who were born here, they're maybe first, second, third generation or whatever. So it helps a lot, honestly, you know, to relate. And yeah, I think a lot of things helping me from that. Yeah. yeah. It's a fluctuating situation some days is great um some days is um not too great uh i mean can I, well so we won't we actually want to move to toronto hmm. uh, it, like initially we wanted to move this summer but because i got a new job and it's like a year contract um so we're planning maybe next summer or depends we will see and so yeah she was like yes because Toronto is diverse, like a lot of more, you know, opportunities, even for a filming industry. Uh, but here, specifically in Kelowna, people are very clicky, so it's hard to make friends. I think we both are struggling with that because um, we've been here for a year and a half now. And if you don't have your group of friends um, or like you've been born here or, you know, like it's hard to in like get friends, really. So, 
people that I know mostly from my workplace or people that, um, because Kamloops, the city I was living before, it's like two hours away. So a lot of people come here and go. So, you know, people that I knew before, but um, she get, she has a group of friends. And But it's also, I noticed one girl is from Ukraine. One is um, maybe Korea. I can't remember. So they're all also international. Mm -hmm. So she's... She not like I'm looking for friends, but it's just, yeah, it's not that you will go like in let's say in Toronto or when I was in, in Europe, you'll go and say, hey, and, you know, people are welcoming, friendly and outgoing. Here, everyone's just like in their own bubble groups, so. Yeah. Yeah. was five years so yeah and and i think bc and kelowna is really great and beautiful but then i'm very people's person and if i'm not like happy with the atmosphere and the vibe you know i'm not going to be happy here when even though people say your happiness depends on you it's how you create it and blah 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 <laughs> you know i get it I get it, but it's still like you want to have some people to go and hang out with and not be annoyed or they just like, what are you talking about, you know? Yeah. Happy if you're like, I don't know, if you live in the slums. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. So, so I like my friends that live here, but I known them before. They're like, yes, you know, you create your own habits. I'm like, shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm moving to Toronto. Tell me whatever you want to say. Just enjoy my face for this year. And that's all. <laughs> yeah. Why did you choose Toronto? Um, I have. So uh, I have friends there from Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijani community is big there. And then um, one of my closest friends, I known her since I was like, years ago and playing in, like being in Baku in Azerbaijan mm. and and when I came actually her little girl like she was two years old uh she made a big party so she invited a lot of Azerbaijani people and when they learned that I was that Senia from national team they were super supportive and they're like whenever you need anything you know just a great support and uh just a lot of things to do like if it's sports any cultural activities food and I just, I like that. I'm a big city person, big city girl, you know? Yeah, it's not that as diverse though. Like Vancouver, yeah, no, yes, it's not. Oh, I, I didn't expect that. Vancouver is not as diverse. Um, and I mean, in BC, there is not, it's only Vancouver, the big city. Kelowna is ish, big ish, a little bit, but not. Not big, 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 yeah. I've never been to Montreal. I actually want to visit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should play. Uh, we are not playing, first of all. That's not going <laughs> to happen. Okay. I, I, what are you going to do? You're going to spike it on my face and I'll be dead. I'm not even playing anymore. People ask me to play. Um, a lot of people love volleyball here in Kelowna, especially beach volleyball, because we have a lot of beaches. When they ask, I'm like, um, no, thank you. I think I'm good. I'm just chilling. I don't know. <laughs> the line inside doesn't like, let's go. No. It is, yeah, and I don't really, I maybe, yeah, I, I played maybe once or twice since I, like, retired from volleyball, so you can imagine. Just tamed it. I remember uh, Mike Tyson, one of podcasts he did. And a few exactly. minutes, uh, like a few months or a, a year, he was training and got into a fight, like on a, obviously a professional, but, yeah. and you believe the. 
I cannot say that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I would like when I watch my old videos, maybe, or like people playing, I'm like, hell yeah, you know, I want to play. But uh, I don't know. It's hard to answer. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're busy with your career and you're being a mom, which is, you mm -hmm. know, an extra, extra job already. Oh, yes. <laughs> Especially at this age, tell me how, about it. Do you mind me asking how old she is? She will be 16 at end of this month. Oh my God, good! I have a 16 year old too. Yeah, so you can imagine. But he's a he's a boy. We we're okay. We chill. Oh, it's so. it's probably different. Yeah, because I've heard that it's, it's just different. And and I get it. Like uh, females, we are emotional human beings. You know, mm. so it's probably. There's a lot more emotions involved, a lot more everything. Yeah, I see. She's into a plus, you know, mommy's like play volleyball and she's like, I want to do arts. Yeah. I think she felt a lot of pressure as well, but I said, it's fine. Like you can do whatever you want to do. I'll support you regardless. Yeah. yeah. Did you coach her when she was younger? Yeah, a little bit. Um, and then when I tried to, like, last year they were playing in school and club, and, you know, sometimes I would come and say something. She's like, no, don't show me what to, like, don't tell me what to do. Don't show me. I'm like, are you serious? Like, in the whole gym, I'm, and she played the same position. I said, in the whole gym here, I said, I am the only person. I mean, not only, but, but yes. maybe the best you knowledgeable person. You are the only person. person. <laughs> the best knowledgeable person about this element blocking so let me teach you no no first of all not only the gym probably the whole province <laughs> maybe i don't know and so when she said no how did you take that oh i was pissed off i'm like okay whatever go and do whatever you want i'm like i'm not watching you did watch i did yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know it's so hard because my kid plays basketball, and I'm not like very involved. I try not to be, but but you know, you know a little bit, and you want to impart it to them, and you just like yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I could never be like those mommies, moms in the gym who are like coming in uh, jerseys. Let's go with the posters, and I'm so always so chill, just watching like this, you know. Yeah, I mean, hey, you were like the top of the top. Yeah, so you don't need to, but that's fun to watch. You still have volleyball watching it? Uh, no, actually, I haven't watched any volleyball except is my friends that I follow on Instagram. Maybe they post something, or you know, like mostly in Philippines because I still follow like um, accounts on Twitter. But that's all. Yeah, I don't. You watch just turn off yourself from volleyball. I don't think they show a lot of volleyball, honestly. Here in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Kind of volleyball is not a big thing here. No, they don't even have pro here, league. No pro league in here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. Uh, even the, the Philippines, I don't know why it's so big in the Philippines. We're all midgets, but it's such a big game. And that's what I love the most. I felt like real big deal out there, you know, because of fans, they they so supportive. And the fact that they always like bring flowers, all the treats, sweets, you know, and um, always they like photo shoots, conferences. We would go to PBL to the halftime show and like, you know, do the interview and <laughs> stuff like that. It was so much fun, really. Was there like a style or technique in the Philippines volleyball that you never seen before? No, actually, you know what's interesting? Because I was really um, fast middle blocker. Like my attack, I'll say, and spikes it was really, really fast. Mm. So I kind of blended with the game that they played. So it was really good because, you know, some players, they, they like to spike higher balls or like they're just slower, like whatever. It could be different ways. But um, I blended with them and it was perfectly fine. But then... The coach, because the girl got injured, so the coach, he asked me if it's okay. So he put me on the right corner, right side. 
-hmm. So he changed my position. So I played half of the season in the Philippines and the position I'm not actually playing. I was playing like outside hitter. And did you tell him like, hey, I cannot, you can't put me there. It's no, no, I said, it's fine. I'll help the team, whatever. And I enjoyed it, you know, they were very supportive. And uh, yeah, I was definitely not in my comfort zone because it's it's a high ball. I, I literally spike really, really, really short, like in quick like balls. Quick, bam, boom. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen probably. So it was the adjustment, but I think I did a good job. And even just being there, you know, helping is the same in my life. I'm very adaptable, like adjustable. Mm. I think getting out of your comfort zone, it's what makes me grow prof personally, professionally in any type of way, you know, because if you always stay in the same spot, like if it's comfy, you're not going to grow. Beautiful. I think we should close it with that. Hey, okay. <laughs> Senya, thank you so much for making time. I really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you too for inviting me. It's nice to share my experience with people. Hopefully someone can relate. If anybody have questions, I'm here in Canada, <laughs> in BC. <laughs> well, for now, BC. Yes, I'm going to move. I'm going to make that big move. So hopefully soon. Awesome. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you again, Senya, for coming on the podcast. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you, listeners, for listening. This is Endoliosa for An Immigrant's Life. I'll see you guys later.